Good evening guys! Today I was planning to make a video about the Senate election in Pennsylvania, but you know, it was just so depressing. And then I noticed something. Hey, there are also governor's elections going on, and all of these people who recently lost elections to the US Senate are now running for governor in some of these toss-up states. So instead I'm going to talk about the governor's race in a very important one, the state of Pennsylvania. Yes, the same state that I was actually planning to do a Senate video on. And as you might know, the guy who is the frontrunner at the moment is Lou Barletta, who was the Senate candidate in 2018. He lost, of course, to Bob Casey. But to put it short, Pennsylvania is a state that has a big Republican field with a few frontrunners and a very small Democratic field. So let's start with the Democrat, because Josh Shapiro is probably going to be the nominee for the Democratic Party. He is the Attorney General, he is your typical Democrat, sort of a centrist within that party. And I do call him the presumed nominee, just because he already holds such a high position in the state, and he must not be underestimated. If the Republicans nominate someone who is not electable enough, he is going to win, because he is not a weak candidate, he does have some electoral strength, so beware. Now let's go over to the Republican primary, and of course, on the top you have Lou Barletta, who was the Senate candidate in 2018. He was, of course, a strong supporter of Trump, that did not help him in 2018, which was, of course, a very good year for Democrats. So let's talk a little bit about his record. He was the mayor of Hazelton for 10 years, then he was a congressman for 8 years, ran a couple of times, and then finally won in the Tea Party wave of 2012. And he is quite tough on immigration. While he was mayor of Hazelton, the Hispanic population in that city grew enormously, and he started imposing laws and rules that would sort of make it harder to be an illegal immigrant. And he did get some legal opposition for that, but I mean that tells you something if you are looking for a America First candidate. If you are looking for a Bush uh, neocon candidate or a Romney milk toast candidate, he is not your guy. So you can argue that he is too far to the right, but having the name recognition of having run for Senate before, I think is a good thing for him, even though he lost. The next one is Doug Mastriano. Now, he is even more controversial than Barletta, and that is why I think it is very risky to nominate this guy. He was actually doing so well in the polls that in the end he just had to announce that he was running. I mean, he was one of the two frontrunners along with Barletta even though he had not announced, so clearly popular among a large chunk of the population. Now, he also has some controversies, especially related to the 2020 election, but the Republican Party base surely could rally around this guy, and I, I think that he would be the favorite of someone like Red Eagle. And actually, I have already mentioned him in one of my alternate history uh, videos, but let's go on. Jake Corman. Now, here's a nice guy. He is, of course... Currently, he's the president pro tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate, and he was the majority leader on behalf of the Republicans in a couple of years before that. He has been there for a long time, and of course, in the 2020 uh, post-election weeks and months, he was on the head of the effort to uh, paint those blue electors from Pennsylvania in a nice red color and then let them certify. I don't know too much more about him, I'm sure he is a okay candidate. Does not have a lot of name recognition, so that's certainly not an advantage. So Pennsylvania is definitely going to be a toss-up, I mean it is one of only two open democratic seats that Republicans have a good chance at flipping for that very reason. Uh, Republicans must not think that anyone they nominate can and will win. Yes, certainly people are more obsessed and more focused on economy, inflation, and certainly that is not playing well to the Democrats because Biden is the guy on top and there is a Democratic Congress. But choosing candidates who can win is still very important. If the Republicans only wanted to play it safe, they would just go with Brian Fitzpatrick and he would probably win the Senate race by five points or so. And 
on the other far end you have to nominate someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene or maybe yeah even Mastriano who are more likely to lose even though you might agree much more with them ideologically and they have a better understanding of trade, immigration and culture. But in the end the most important thing for the people of Pennsylvania is to get a responsible governor that can try to tackle the problems of everyday people with inflation and other economic hardships who is able to protect them against criminals and take care of the state's residents. So elect a good governor and then it doesn't matter that much what cuckoo you send off to the senate to rail about for the next six years. Yeah, not thinking about anyone in particular. But thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.